January 31st, 2019, Chapter 5, Human Action Study Group, um, going through Robert P. Murphy's Human Action Study Guide. So, uh, worth the study questions. Mm -hmm. This was a really short chapter, it was yeah. like 17 minutes long on Audible. Do you have some notes? I do, I, oh. I actually <laughs> went through the study questions and took, took some notes oh, on nice. them. I hope so. There were some that I actually don't know the answer to, so I'm hoping to lean on you a little bit for those. Okay. Um, so, let's break down by chapter. Okay. Um, in what way, if any, do yesterday's goals serve today's actions? Maybe I'm looking in the wrong part. Oh, did oh, I? Yeah. Oh, I skipped, uh, I skipped the whole section. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so section one, the temporal character of praxeology. Mm -hmm. What makes thinking itself an action? Um, thinking is an action because man is going from one state to another. specifically one state of consciousness to another. Mm -hmm. And it takes time to make that progression. And it's a more desired state. So there's like a um, unfulfilled desire or a state of uneasiness and then a desired better state and then you go through it. It's an, it's an action of thinking. Okay. Uh, what distinguishes the logical system from the praxeological system? So I would say um, the logical si system is all synchronous, um, whereas um, I think about it in terms of computer program, um, where you can have a bunch of steps and you're not waiting for a call to the outside world. So like, let's say you had a an asynchronous computer program, you might have to wait for a response from a database. Hmm. And that's really what praxeological systems are, is every action is asynchronous. Um, whereas logical systems um, can be done instantly. You don't have to wait for anything. Yeah. The word, or the phrase that Mises uses is out of time. Mm -hmm. I thought that was weird, but it makes sense. So, like, logical systems, like geometric proofs, are not time-dependent in any way. Um, but praxeological systems are. Like, um, how much will I pay for this mortgage if it's a 15-year mortgage versus a 30-year mortgage? Time makes mm -hmm. a big difference in praxeological calculations. Uh, two, past, present, and future. Why is action necessarily directed toward the future? So, action by definition is to change state or to attempt to change state so uh, you can't act in the, the present well I guess every action is directed towards the future because it's um, the future is constantly coming yeah and it's like yeah. part of that hope of like what is an action but to achieve a more desirable result and when can you achieve that if only in the future right uh, well, you want it now, but you can only aim for to the future to get it now. So, how does man become conscious of the notion of time? Um, it is, uh, man, I, I was listening to the book this morning, and I made a note of this. Oh, really? But In, in your book? In my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I forget the exact sentence they used is um, what do you think 
Well, I, I wrote a note to this one. Um, so how does man become conscious of the notion of time? And uh, I said, uh, through, through action, through taking action, a man understands the, the notion of time because um, not only is, is action directed at changing the, the present, um, well, it's, it's aimed at the future to affect the present, that very act of like thinking about um, changing things makes one aware of, of time, the boundary between when an opportunity is available and when it's not, and um, when an expected result is expected to occur. Um, let me see, I said, through action and understanding the boundaries between opportunities ripe in the present that can be acted upon or these or those for which the moment has passed and the desire to change by taking action now. That's another way I realize it is like, oh, the moment has passed. Shit. Now I'm aware of time. Yeah. I, okay, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> what role does the present play for an acting being? So, and they made a point of man only acts in the present. Hmm. Yep, so the present is, you know, the environment in which the acting man is in. Just as, um, right. you know, I have a state of uneasiness maybe sitting in this chair, but I could have a state of uneasiness that you also have to take into account at this moment. Maybe in the future, it's, it's different. So I think of time just as another variable in your environment. And so the present is all, like, that's what that variable is always at. at. You're always in the present hmm. kind of thing. I, I pulled a, a quote from the book um, on this topic. Present is defined by the presence of a ripe opportunity to take some potential action. And um, pr it was interesting, the discussion about what is present, like a race car driver m may decide that um, now it's not, it's too early to turn, but someone who's speaking in 1913 Germany would say, now uh, freedom of speech is respected but they don't, and, and they both are talking about the present, but mm -hmm. the future is so uncertain that the present that this guy was talking about was not as long as he thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, the economization of time. What does time have in common with economic goods? Time is an economic good. That's an interesting statement. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. You, well, you can you can buy time. Mm -hmm. um, you could buy someone's services for an amount of time. Yeah. I don't know how you buy time necessarily itself. But the um, they're both scarce. Yeah. Are they in the the section they talk about you know imagine. A world where, um, I think this is clever. So imagine a world where there's no concept of time. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to um, make a perfect world because there's like, you have an infinite amount of time. But the actions to make that perfect uh, world are dependent on one another. So like, let's say I want to build this huge mansion. Um, for myself, I can't add furniture to that mansion until I built the mansion. So there's a sooner rather than a later. Wasn't that interesting? I thought yeah. that was really so. Cool. It's like it, it, it's a paradox to have infinite time, because even if you have infinite time, there's still a concept of a sooner and a later. So therefore, there is a concept of time. 
And not only is there a sooner and a later, but there's um, your preferences are revealed uh, by your actions. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to go um, eat a banana rather than build your mansion, like if the, do you have a higher value on the banana than the mansion? And like so much can be revealed even with infinite time um, through the uh, order that yeah. people choose things. Um, what distinguishes time from economic goods? So the first question was, what does time have in common with economic goods? And what does time not have in common with economic goods? Hmm. I think I might have jumped the gun with the sooner and later. What do you mean? Oh, because it, yeah, yeah, it's coming yeah, later. Yeah, did we satisfy the first question? What does time have in common with economic goods? Um, it's scarce and needs to be economized. Okay. Uh, what distinguishes time from economic goods? Hmm. Okay, so it's the fact that once you pass, you can never go back to the present. Um, it has that weird property of not being able to revert back to the state. And it's continually running out. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, a, a piece of gold is there, we could say, I guess, forever. Whereas time is continuously running. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty good distinction between time and economic goods. And so now, uh, section four is the temporal relation between actions, uh, or time as it relates to human action. So what is the meaning of sooner or later? We covered that. Mm -hmm. In what way, if any, do yesterday's goals serve today's actions? I don't think they do. I'd say if you reworded this to say in yesterday's state, is you can have a goal and have an aim to achieve that goal, but you don't necessarily achieve that goal. So um, your goals are made in the present, and so you can't look at the past goals because they don't have any bearing on today's goals they may not they may, they may still right no I really kind of really thought about this um, conditions may not have changed everything might still be the same right uh, no the conditions have changed the time has changed um, but the opportunity may still be available like um, you know, a bag of flowers on the shelf, and you need that bag of flour, and it's there yesterday, and it's there today, so the conditions are the same. I would say generally, though. Yeah, but you might have less money in your pocket, or you might, mm. you might, you might have had a bake sale yesterday that you needed to cook for, and now you don't need it. You don't have a bake sale. Okay. So, so yesterday's goals really don't serve today's right actions. And I think that was the point he made in the book. Mm. And it was definitely something that I struggled with mm. and contended. Um, but according to Mises, I believe it's not. All right. So what's wrong with the argument that if A is preferred to B and B is preferred to C, logically A is preferred to C? So this argument is um, generally used to um, dismiss uh, the, the notion that there is no such thing as a rational action, saying um, if A is preferred to C, that is irrational. But the way they, um, the way this doesn't make sense is this doesn't happen um, synchronously, this happens asynchronously. So if A is preferred to B, let's say yesterday, and today B is preferred to C, and tomorrow A is preferred to C, that mm. doesn't break down logically because time has passed and your preferences could have changed. 
so yeah so this is not a closed logical system it's you when you introduce time um, your value changes value judgments could change over time right and then like all decisions are by definition rational in mm -hmm. some way mm -hmm. um, okay that's a really good explanation what is the difference between the logical concept of consistency and the praxeological concept of consistency. I made a note of this. <clears throat> logical consistency. Oh, maybe they. Maybe I, I misread the question originally. I wrote that constancy is clinging to the same principles, and logical consistency relates to your thinking being consistent, like you're logically consistent, mm -hmm. um, so it relates to thinking, and um, that praxeological the concept of consistency uh, relates to acting, mm -hmm. you're acting with consistency. Logical being thinking, praxeological being acting. Right. So would you say um, praxeological consistency would be always acting with the same goal in mind and maybe those actions change but it's still consistent with coming to your goal? Right, right. Like if um, I have to, if I want to get a piece of gold and it's over there. Um, when it moves over there, if I go over there, I'm st I, it, it's, it might seem inconsistent, but my goal is the same and I'm mm -hmm. still trying to do the, it's just conditions of change. Um, how does constancy differ from rationality? Give examples. I think we just did. Yeah. Uh, it's still rational for me to go over there, um, even though it's not constant. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything else, any other note on that? I think that's... No. Um, why does Mises use the example of a speculator at the stock exchange? What is he trying to demonstrate? So, the overall goal of the speculator is to profit. Mm-hmm. And, um... Throughout the day, if you looked at his actions, um, you might not think that way, but it's all aimed towards his, his overall goal. Yeah, Misi said he would go in with a plan. Mm -hmm. Like, this is my plan. Yeah. And then if you're an outside observer watching the speculator being like, you're not following your plan at all. Right, market the conditions have changed. Yeah, it's like, well, yeah, of course he didn't follow his plan, but his... His real plan is make profit, <laughs> so it doesn't matter what the steps were, he can choose a different path. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not constant, but it is rational. Bam. Cool. We finished before 10. Nice. Next chapter is on uncertainty. It makes sense that he covers time really early. They, um, Robert Murphy writes a little note about that. Um, about how important the concept of time is for uh, interest, and I imagine it will appear again. Yeah, definitely. And uncertainty in the future. I love how it's it's just building blocks, like boom, yeah, boom, boom, boom. boom. Mm -hmm.